video part 8.2. It's a video for very basic Linux commands. It's going to help you move around the operating system and how to read and look at some very simple system files. One of the first things you're going to want to know how to do is to know what directory you're currently located in. So if you run the command pwd, it will tell you which directory you're in, and we're in uh, the home directory for the user pi. If, for example, we wanted to change into a directory, we would run the cd command. I'm going to go um, change directory and give the path of forward slash etc. And if I then run the pwd command, I'll now see I've now moved into that etc directory. Again, if I run the clear command, it'll just clear the screen, so we're starting afresh. Okay, so now we're in this uh, slash etc directory, I may want to look at some of the files that are in this directory. I can do that by running the ls, the list command, which will basically list all files within that directory. Although just that command on its own gives us just the names of the files, no details on the files themselves. So one of the next things we may want to do is add a switch, which is a, um, this part here is the hyphen L, which gives us a little bit more information about um, that particular file. So if I do ls minus L, what we can see here is a bit more information about the file. Again, on the right hand side, we have the, um, the file name. We have when the file was last modified. So the, the, the year, date, time, the size of the file in bytes, the owner of the file and the permissions of access that that file currently has. Now, there are certain files that we may want to look at that are more important than others. One, for example, is the file resolve.conf, which in the previous video talks about how we, um, where our name servers, um, our information is stored. If we run the more command, which is a uh, command that allows you to read a text file, we can run more and then give the name of the file and hit enter and it will allow us to read that particular file. Now, say for example, I wanted to back up this file. What I could do is I can make a copy of the file. So um, obviously we don't have copy and paste in terms of uh, click with your mouse, it's all on the command line. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the command copy. We're then going to select the resolve.conf file. And then what we're going to do is we're going to um, leave a space and we're going to um, give this um, uh, backup file a new name. So I'm going to, do is I'm going to call it resolve.conf, but I'm just going to, at the end of it, I'm going to put dot backup. So this is an example of where um, I haven't given it the uh, root command. So what I will need to do is to put in front of this command um, sudo which gives me root privileges um, to be able to make um, alterations to the system. Now I've done that I'll be able to have a look and do an ls minus um, la and if I have a look and I will be able to see that I have a file called not only resolve.conf but a resolve.conf.backup so I've now made a backup of my file. We'll now see that the file has been made at 2 o'clock on that May the 10th. Now for example, say I wanted to move that backup file to the home directory of my Pi users. So originally we had um, the directory slash home slash Pi. If I wanted to move that backup file to that directory, I could use the command um, move. So what I'll do is I'll put sudo in, um, sudo in front to give me root permissions to do that. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to give myself root permissions run the move command and then going to say which file I want to um, move and then I'm then going to say which directory I'm, I'm going to put that in so when I run that command that file will then be of move will then be moved if I do an ls minus la again and we have a look we'll see that that file resolve.conf.backup is no longer there however if I move into the pi directory and do an ls minus la, we can now see that that resolve.conf.backup file is there. If we view that file, we'll see that it's a copy of the original file. Very basically, we've um, read a file, copied it, backed it up, and obviously moved it into a different directory.
Now, in this directory here, we have two um, files, my backup file and a test file I made earlier on today. Now, what I may want to do is delete or remove one of those files. So the simplest thing I can do is use the command rm, which will allow me to remove that file, and then I can then name the file I wish to remove. In this instance, it's going to be the text file. If I then look, I will find that um, I have now removed that file. Now one of the next things I might want to do is make a blank file that I might want to start using for um, scripting or programming or just a temporary file to put some data in. So I'm going to use the command, oh, I'm going to use the command touch, which will create a, a very, very basic file. I'm going to do, um, uh, create, recreate this file I just deleted called test.txt. If we do an ls on there again, we can see that file has been created. What I might want to do though is to move that into a directory. So um, what I can do is I can create a new directory called, um, we'll call for example, backup. So if I run the command mkdir backup, that will be make a direct or dir directory called backup. If I then do an ls in there, I will then see that I have not only got my uh, original backed up um, resolve.conf file, the new test file I've created, and my backup directory. The D at the beginning of the permissions here denotes that it up oh, here that it is a um, it is a directory. If for example I wanted to move um, these two files into that directory there, what I could do is I could say move um, test.txt into backup and I could also move resolve.conf into backup. If I then run my uh, ls-l, those two files appear to have gone missing. If I move into the backup directory and then have a look in there, we can now see that they are within that file. Now, say for example, I'd forgotten um, where I'd put that backup file or that test file. One of the useful commands I can use is find. I will then I'm going to start um, with find space forward slash, which would allow me to search from the front of the uh, root file structure. I will then do the switch minus name, so I'm looking for the name of that file. I'm then going to put in test.txt, which is the file we just created. I'm going to also have to remember to put in sudo at the beginning of that so I can um, run the permissions through there and I'll let that run for a moment and it will then tell me the path and where I've stored that file. Another example would be if I was to put in here the um, resolve.conf file it will tell me that that's in slash um, etc which is what we expected so finally, one of the most useful things we can do is we can use the man command. Now, um, for example, the find command gives us an incredibly um, large amount of options. We can look for files by their name, by their file size, um, by when they were created, when they were modified, all those types of different things. So it can be a bit daunting as to what commands and what options we have available on any particular command. So if we use the command uh, man, man, it will give us a manual for that particular command. For example, here we can do um, man on the find command, and it will give us um, all the information we need to know um, in assisting us in learning how to use um, that particular find command. So this has been a short 10 minute video on how to use some very basic Linux commands. You'd hopefully be able to use these against your Raspberry Pi and I hope that you found them useful.